Hi and welcome to Upgrade's Career in Short series on machine learning and AI. I'm Rohit Ghosh and I'm an AI researcher and founding member of Cure.ai. Today I'll be taking you through the path to becoming a machine learning and AI expert. Now, uh, broadly there are two ways that I normally if someone comes and asks me I'm there are a lot of questions that I would ask and you would need to rate yourself uh, you need to have a very clear understanding about your capabilities uh, to you know understand which is the way that you should approach so broadly there are two ways I would normally call a math way and the code way so math way is what uh, sort of something that I did for when I wanted to get started in deep learning or machine learning so Mathway is someone is kind of suited for someone who's coming from maths and statistics kind of background. You don't have as much good understanding about how coding is done. You don't have as much un good understanding about uh, software development, for example. Uh, then Mathway is the suggested way. So what is a Mathway look like? So firstly, you have to understand the maths behind all of this uh, machine learning algorithms. And you have to get that right and you can use that uh, using online free resources, you could take up courses, whatever way suits you that's perfectly fine. But the first step to get in the maths part is get your maths correct and absolutely correct, right? Because that's something, that's what we would be sort of leveraging for our rest of the path. Once you get your maths up part correct, then you have to start on Kaggle challenges. Uh, obviously. Uh, you're going to get stuck up. I mean, I remember the days when I wanted to get uh, started on all these problems and I would probably spend complete day trying to figure out how to implement even the most basic of linear regression or logistic regression. Because again, something I was not very familiar with. And so that's, that's, that's going to be part of both the journeys. I mean, you have to start at a problem, get stuck. If you're not getting stuck, if you're just looking at, you know, guided implementation or any of that, uh, probably your chances, you, it's going to take you a lot longer for you to actually get hands on in machine learning. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a sort of common advice that I give to everyone that, you know, you have to start with a problem, get stuck and try and solve it by yourself. Don't try and look at solutions, try and, uh, you know, try and do read up documentations. For example, you know, if you're coming, if you're following the maths way, then if you're stuck in a Kaggle problem, then the first step that I normally suggest is look up the documentation. So if you're using Scikit or Keras or whatever the library you're using, look up the documentation and from there, try and figure out what is a way to you can solve the problem. Once you have that part solved out and you can, you can also basically look at Kaggle has a lot of these open kernels that are present, right? You can look at some of those codes to understand how other people have coded. In the maths way, it's very important for you to understand that, you know, uh, why an algorithm is, for example, not working, right? Or why an algorithm is working and what is probably the ways you can resolve that. And uh, you only look at Python open kernel implementation just to get an idea about how to write the code. Don't, don't, don't try and copy it. Don't copy the, you know, whatever the processing and all of that they have done. Your idea of looking at open source implementation is just to understand how to write the code. Once you familiarize yourself with uh, building hands-on problems, then the next step is sort of, uh, you know, solve open uh, practical problems. I mean, these are not, Kaggle has a, as data sets has, which are very, uh, I would say clean data sets, data sources. So don't try and work on Kaggle problems, try and work on more real practical problems. You can get them on other websites, you can do some freelancing work, do whatever you want to, but get some hands on real data, right? Kaggle data is sort of very fabricated, clean data most of the times. So once you do work on practical problems, then you can start blogging about them and then probably publicizing your work. That's a code way. Uh, that's a, sorry, that's a maths way. And then the code way is basically where you get, you're someone who's very familiar with software engineering, right? But maths is not something that comes intuitively to you. So in that case, the first step is get familiar with the libraries, right? You don't need to understand the algorithms on the day one. That's perfectly fine. If you just get yourself familiarized with what a scikit does, what the uh, Keras does and how they solve a problem, right? For example, if given data set, how they probably would, uh, how you run a random forest algorithm or how you run a decision tree algorithm, just get familiarized with that. Once you get familiarized, again, you have simultaneously start working on Kaggle challenges and get stuck. This is again important in this part of the journey as well that you have to start on a problem and get stuck. You would have algorithms, you would probably, as, because you're someone who's coming from software part of things, you probably would not get stuck in coding up the entire thing, but you would get stuck in having very low accuracies, right? Because you would not know what is, uh, what is an algorithm working, uh, how is an algorithm working and probably what are the steps that are missing out. 
So to do that, you then look at what are the other people who have solved the same problem on Kaggle, how they have done it, right? And understand why they have done it. So that's how you approach this particular pathway, which is that, you know, get stuck and understand why are people getting stuck, where they are getting stuck, and how are people solving, other people solving the same problem and understand the merits, demerits. And that's how you start getting a familiarity with the maths part of things, which you have to do in any ways, right? So after you do that, then again, as I said, you start with practical problems once you are done with the Kaggle problems, because again, hey, we need to solve real life problems. We can just solve clean data set problems like Kaggle. Once you solve practical problems, then you can blog about them, publicize your work. And that's, that's broadly how you can complete this journey. So broadly, both of these journeys have slightly different uh, initial journey uh, that is very different but after that you have to start working on practical problems blog about them publicize your work so that's something that's common in across both of them and if you need any other help in how ca you can approach any of this particular both the steps please write in the comments below we would be more than happy to answer and if you found this video useful like share and subscribe to our channel we'll be back with more such amazing content also, if you want to learn new skills or move ahead in your career, check out upgrad.com.